Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Anna Zelba, and uh, as Sarah said, I will take you through some of the findings from uh, the survey that we recently did on SAP modernization in the Nordics. Um, it's quite an elaborate survey, so I don't have time to go through all of it, um, but uh, I have a few results that I would like to, to, um, to bring forward today. And uh, if you have any additional questions, you will, uh, you're always welcome to reach out and also uh, we are still writing a uh, executive brief with some more elaborate results that uh, you will receive a link to as soon as that is ready. But before uh, diving into the actual survey results, uh, just a few notes on what we see going on in the market. Uh, of course, we talk about digital transformation, business transformation, digitization, um, whatever the, the term we like to use. But um, when we talk about that and an overall trend, uh, we see, we talk about the future enterprise. So that's how companies uh, are going to cope with all of these different uh, elements that really are involved or um, part of digital transformation. And uh, we talk about it's a different way of operations, uh, it's a different way of working, it's a different way of utilizing uh, new technologies, using data, um, providing new customer experiences, uh, collaborating differently, uh, with partners, customers, suppliers, and uh, more ecosystem setups, uh, and innovating faster and more um, digitally enabled, uh, digitally supported innovation. Um, and in the middle of this, we really see the uh, ERP system sitting. So, uh, and that's why we talk a lot about, uh, not just me, uh, really the, the entire market, talk a lot about SAP or ERP in general modernization uh, these years. It's because so many of these different uh, things are happening and making an impact on the businesses so that, um, the core enterprise applications, they need to be modernized uh, as well. So uh, just a few words on the actual survey. Uh, it launched uh, late last year, just before Christmas. Um, it's an online survey, um, 400 SAP users across the Nordics, uh, private companies only, so no public uh, segment uh, covered by this. Uh, it includes mid-sized to enterprise um, great customers, but we actually see that uh, because we were screening for whether or not they use SAP, um, most of them are large. I think it's about two thirds that are in companies from uh, a thousand or more employees. Um, we ask uh, respondents across both the business line and across the IT uh, domain, uh, and I will come, um, come back to a few differences that we actually see in, uh, in terms of that as we go along. It also included both actual decision makers and uh, uh, people with a more uh, advising or recommendational uh, mode in the, or role in the, the organization. So with that, um, the first discovery that I've decided to, to highlight is uh, that legacy SAP does not mean meet the business requirements. Um, that's nothing new, I think. Uh, I think a lot of surveys have said the same and a lot of people have said the same. Uh, what we've done here is uh, we've looked at the uh, satisfaction level. Um, and uh, this is specifically how many uh, on a scale from one to eight uh, that uh, scores a top three on the uh, satisfaction level. Uh, but we could have used uh, averages or anything else really, we would see the same pattern. Uh, what we see is that uh, in, in general, there's a reasonable um, satisfaction with the, the technical aspects of SAP systems. And I call it legacy SAP here, that's typically ECC. 6.0, uh, uh, so it's not um, step S for HANA. We uh, see that as more a, a modern um, environment. So it's the, the older SAP environments uh, that are still performing reasonably well. Functionality is reasonable. The stability is, is okay. But as soon as we start talking about the business alignment, the flexibility, the agility, we see that substantially fewer uh, respondents actually are satisfied with that. Also cost, um, only a third are really satisfied with the cost, but I don't think you, know, you can ever really make anyone really satisfied about the cost um, unless it's, it's free. And then you would still find something to, to complain about anyway. Um, but really we see that there's a, especially as we see companies becoming more and more digital, uh, we talk about digital first businesses, digital first economies uh, with a need for, for flexibility and need to agility, uh, but the systems uh, increasingly do not uh, meet on, uh, on those parameters. And um, as a consequence, we see that uh, about 70% of uh, those that are on a legacy uh, platform, uh, they plan on modernizing their environments in, in some way or the other over the next uh, couple of years. And it's interesting because very often when we talk about modernization, it is about this going from a traditional uh, setup to a um, SAP S4HANA uh, setup, 
um, or another shifting ERP um, supplier or whatever, but really changing the call. But we actually see that's only about half of the respondents that say that's actually what they're going to do. Um, a lot of organizations, they still consider a modernization effort. It's about new types of databases, uh, building new customizations, adding functionalities. So it's not necessarily this rip and replace or a complete change in the, the setup that is, uh, is needed. Or is at least, it may be needed, but at least it's not what companies are doing. Uh, what we also see is that it's not just about changing uh, whether it's the core or whether it's uh, other elements, it's also about changing bro more broadly in the um, both in the technology stack and, and in uh, how you you uh, operate in the business. Uh, especially those that plan on upgrading the core, they also plan on shifting to the cloud and they also plan on re-engineering processes. Uh, and one thing uh, related to that, just like to, to point a little bit on, is um, the shift to the cloud. Because we talk a lot about multi-cloud, we talk a lot about cloud orchestration, cloud optimization, uh, cloud first and, and what have you. Uh, but really when it comes to the core SAP environment, the shift towards the cloud is relatively slow. Um, uh, or, and uh, that's both because some things really are, is difficult uh, or are difficult to shift to a cloud environment if you have had a lot of customizations uh, developed. Uh, it can also be compliance, security and, and all different uh, other kinds of elements. Uh, but the shift to the cloud is really relatively slow. And I think that's something we could discuss further um, today that uh, what you can actually achieve is you, if you try to move more towards the cloud at a faster pace. So the third discovery um, is uh, when we ask about what do companies expect or respondents expect uh, when they are upgrading? What do they look forward to or fear going, going forward? Uh, and as many of these are not really started yet, or they may be in the uh, preparation process, um, the concerns are really about, do we have enough resources? Do we have the budgets? Uh, can we integrate with other IT systems? Um, and um, we will see that the thing about uh, skills and uh, organizational issues, that's uh, further uh, down the, the list. But if we compare it actually to those that have been through a modernization process, and of course we can't say that they necessarily have the same starting point and have the same objectives as uh, those that are planning to do it right now. But, but nonetheless, I think it's, uh, it's striking to see that things like uh, IT skills or lack of IT skills um, and the uh, challenges of uh, shifting uh, or migrating customizations, that is something that is really being, being overlooked. And also we see few, too few people being involved, lack uh, business skills. So really we see it's much more about competence requirements and complexity that are, um, are perceived as, uh, or that are experienced as uh, challenges compared to what is expected before, beforehand. And of course, we also see that, um, that uh, more uh, organizations that had to, or experienced changes to the original plan, because I guess no one plans to make changes to the plan. Um, so, so that's quite uh, obvious that uh, we do see that. But the amount of uh, skills or the access to, uh, to skills and competencies is something that, um, that we see especially today, become even more apparent um, as uh, we do see, of course, that uh, IT skills become more and more difficult to, to attract uh, in, uh, in for, for many organizations. If we also look at uh, the objectives, um, uh, what is it that is expected to be achieved with this? Uh, we see there's a focus on the IT element, uh, user experiences that is typically um, internal users. So that's the SAP users in the business, not the end user, the, the end customer. Um, IT security uh, is about of course, security, stability, and then we have some um, about um, business alignment, uh, lower cost. And then we see uh, further down on the list, we see uh, things like business innovation and uh, these more business oriented approaches. So there's a focus on, uh, on the IT or an expectation that it's the IT that will improve the most. And again, if we compare that to those that have been through a, a uh, process or have started it, because it's not just a project, it really is a, a process as such. Um, we see especially about um, total cost of ownership, uh, business alignment, uh, those, we see fewer people that are, fewer companies that actually experience those um, as, uh, as great advantages. Um, and um, that is not, I would say that there are different elements to that, because as you will hear in, uh, in the fireside chat in, in a second, um, it's not the case that companies only benefit from uh, better IT, more stable ERP systems uh, when they modernize, they really also do benefit from a uh, business point of view uh, and with in returns to TCO and better alignment and faster innovation and all that. 
but the challenge with that really um, is, uh, is something about the KPI. So that's the, the third, uh, fifth, I can't even count here, uh, fifth discovery uh, that I like to bring forward. Um, we see that 40%, they look at IT performance KPIs, uh, 32 uh, talk about the IT development KPIs. So that can be um, deployment frequency, time to, to uh, market, all these different elements. And 29% um, about the business KPI, so the cost related uh, and the business outcomes, so be it uh, revenue increases or additional customers or whatever it might be. Uh, but the interesting thing here really is that we see a lot of, uh, we see only about 40%, uh, they use both IT KPIs and business related KPIs. So it's, we see a lot of organizations, they don't really measure across the, uh, both the IT and the business domain about the performance on the uh, SAP systems. And that, of course, means that if you don't measure anything related to business outcomes, uh, don't measure anything related to faster time to market uh, and things like that, then you will not, in, in hindsight, see that those were where we improved the most. Um, it will be something you, you measure. So really, it is really important to measure both beforehand so you know where to start, but also to measure and assess the specific KPIs uh, on the business side and also on the, uh, on the uh, IT side. And um, that brings me to the last discovery, um, which is really about this uh, disconnect that there is between IT and the business. Um, these are the, the benefits, the chief benefits that I showed on a previous slide just a few minutes back. Uh, and uh, I've emphasized those where we see the largest difference between what IT management and what business management see as the main benefits. And it's not surprising to see that the, in the business management, they see the user experience as the, the greatest uh, benefits. Whereas in, um, in IT, uh, it's more about the, the documentation, so it's easier to, to meet compliance requirements and, and so forth. Uh, it's faster uh, IT delivery, and it's about uh, improved IT security. But really it is, and there's nothing wrong that they see, see this, these things differently because of course they have different approach to it. But it really is important that you bring them better together. Um, if the IT department do not understand that this is about the user experience uh, and they only think that, well, we just need to deliver faster um, without knowing or understanding what the, the internal users want, then of course that's a challenge. And the same goes also for the business. If uh, uh, the IT department is able to deliver services faster, if they have improved the security or changed the security setup, so that new processes can be implemented, uh, which couldn't for various reasons before, for security reasons beforehand, then of course the business needs to know that so that they can leverage on that and evolve new processes related to that. So really bringing those together are some of the things that we see being, being paramount. And the same goes for, for the challenges. Um, the IT department, or the IT management really focused on the, the, the very tangible stuff related to the project. Um, how does it integrate? What's the budget? Do we meet the deadlines or we couldn't meet the deadlines? Those are very much what the IT domain uh, talk about. Whereas if we look at the, the business, it's more about the business skills and they're not pointing to themselves. I'm quite sure they are actually pointing to the, the uh, IT department and saying they don't understand the business that, that, we, um, that we are in. Um, we also see changes to plan um, and the collaborate, collaboration between business and, and IT. So it really, I think it's, uh, again, that's something that needs to be looked at, that the IT management, they need to be better at um, working with the, IT, the the business department and vice versa. They need to really come stronger together in, in order to uh, to get the most of the uh, modernization efforts. And uh, just one additional point to the discovery about the uh, lack of um, connectivity or connection between IT and business is if we talk about uh, something as uh, like the, the number of or share of licenses being not being used or being utilized, uh, then we see IT management uh, only 3% realize or believe, or maybe that is the case, but say that, uh, well, we are utilizing every single license that we have. We don't have anything idle. Uh, in the uh, business management, three times as many um, say that uh, or believe that they have fully um, utilized all licenses. So the, the cost or loss, we could actually cost it um, uh, related to that, is not really apparent to the business. And also we see that the the share of uh, people responding saying that they don't know about this is also significantly higher in the, in the business. And, and maybe some of it uh, is not necessarily for everyone to understand or know everything, uh, but really making sure that all these different uh, KPIs, the cost elements, the advantages, that they are communicated uh, throughout the organization, both on the IT side and towards the business side, is really a paramount um, for, um, 
for, for uh, every any uh, modernization effort that the organizations need to take. That was my relatively quick uh, run through of things. And uh, as Sarah said, you will receive the slides. So you have my contact information here. You're always welcome to reach out if you have any questions, comments. Also, I will um, join Martin and Jan uh, after the fireside chat for the Q&A. So uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. And with that, I would like to hand over to my colleague, Jan, who will lead the fireside chat with Martin. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Anas. And uh, thank you for, for the presentation here of, uh, of this really interesting uh, survey diving into uh, to, to, to the Nordics part of this uh, uh, SAP modernization uh, trend, which of course has to do with the uh, general uh, uh, enterprise applications uh, trend, but uh, now we're going to dive a bit more into uh, to the insights connected to to the survey, uh, but also how actually to run a successful SAP modernization. And uh, for that, I'm joined uh, here by uh, by Martin Jones. Uh, Martin is the head of SAP Consulting Technology Consulting and Solutions SAP Services at uh, at T Systems uh, Northern Europe. And uh, Martin, uh, welcome. Uh, maybe you could uh, start by talking just a bit about uh, your role uh, when it comes to the actual work around SAP modernization. Oh, you are on mute, Martin. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, Much better. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Thank <solution>. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, my, my, my role in, in SAP modernization has really changed over the last may, maybe three years, and that as the industry has, has really changed. Um, we've we've seen a, a, a completely different turnaround from where we were looking at just um, people moving to S4 and people moving to the, the to public cloud. And, and, and now we're looking, uh, sitting actually down with customers. They want to know more about digitalization. They want to more, know more about all the pieces that you can get with S4, what the business benefits are, um, how they can completely monod modernize and restructure their business to actually get um, better processes uh, and be able to uh, do more and that with less as well. Uh, and also really get a better return of their investment. And, and what we're finding now is it's actually a journey uh, to move into the cloud in S4. So we, we have to really take uh, the time that we've got now before <clears throat> the, the time limit to expires in, in 2030 um, to, to really take those customers and, and change the way that they're working uh, and be able to, to get all those benefits and that before they actually get to S4 and, and move into the cloud. So there's a lot more involved now than, than where we were several years ago. So it, it, it's really interesting as well, sitting down with customers and looking at how they can modernize their IT landscape, but also actually modernize their business as well. Yeah, uh, excellent. And, and, and the survey that, that we've done together with you uh, here in, uh, in the Nordics, kind of, well, it established the, the will to do modernization among uh, Nordic SAP users. Uh, however, uh, I think it could be interesting uh, here to, to, to talk about because it's, it's in different ways this modernization uh, is, is actually, there's a will to do it, uh, but, but it, it could be interesting to talk a bit about why uh, and the outcomes. Uh, and for, for that uh, purpose, we have uh, brought uh, some, uh, some cases uh, to discuss. Uh, and, and the first one here is uh, the car manufacturer, the uh, Seat. Uh, they, they, they did a what's called sort of with a, with a brownfield approach, uh, a, a transformation process here. Uh, maybe you could, could talk us a bit through uh, here, Martin, the, the challenges. What, what were the challenges in, in this specific case? Uh, yeah, and, uh, and I think this, this is one that really uh, resonates with a lot of customers at the moment is that the, the, one of the key challenges is um, you're actually disrupting your business. So how do you actually do a smooth migration from uh, where you are today, which most customers see as a really good working solution, uh, to move them to S4, um, which obviously has been forced by SAP and that from a, mm. a licensing perspective and, and, and move to a more digitalization environment. But it, it, it's really now how do you do that? But then you've got to then reduce the complexity and that to be able to do that. So you have the ability to, to simplify a lot of the, the processes that you're doing, use new digitalization functions, uh, mobility as well. So being able to use things uh, like tablets and mobile phones and that to, to really look at what's going on. And, and, and someone like Seat really is uh, 
really sort of like uh, their, their operations 24 by 7, 365 days a, a year. So they're, they're continually mm. working. So how do you actually take out um, your main business system and that which is controlling the whole of all your plants and that when you're, you're actually really working? And so it, it's really difficult for a lot of customers to do that. And we, we see this not only with SEAT, but in a lot of areas and that to, to really uh, be challenging in, in that aspect. So this is also what sort of the, the brownfield uh, approach really is about. It's uh, sort of moving from existing uh, to uh, to something new, but it's actually taking you not only through the, the, the digital transformation and, and, and that kind of uh, effectiveness, but also into innovation. Yeah, and the brownfield approach is quite... Um good for certain companies as well because the, the brownfield approach really will um, move your existing landscape into an S4 system and it, and it switches off a lot of the functionality. Um, so you can actually then uh, put on the functionality that you want to and when you want to. So you're, you're slightly in more control uh, of that whereas uh, with, with other approaches and that you're, you're completely changing the whole of your business, uh, maybe all at once and that with, but with Brownfield and that you, you can really more control um, how you're actually moving it to it. So, so someone like say it was quite good from that aspect by, by using the, the activate program uh, with, with SAP so that you, you upgrade your existing system, you switch on the pieces that you really want to for, for that time being, and then you can move on over a structured program over the next maybe couple of years to actually switch on all the functionality that you really want to in S4 and really get the benefits of those then. Yeah, and, and again, indicating that uh, innovation is actually uh, is actually quite an important part of what's uh, what's going on here. And, and we heard in in in, uh, in Anna's uh, uh, a finding from from the survey that that this might not be as obvious when, when you just look at why are we uh, why are we doing this modernization? But uh, but but eventually it comes to that. So how important do, would you say innovation is when 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 it comes to these uh, uh, modernization projects like Seat did? Um, I, I think innovation is absolutely key in, in mm. what every customer is doing at the moment mm. because it's we, we most customers have been using um, ECC and that for many many years and it's it, it, it's what it is um, but but now we, we've we're going to a more digitalized um, mm. universe uh, we, we're really mm. everything is changing at the moment we've got more mobile applications you've got uh, greater uh, ways of connecting systems and everything now. So the, the innovation parts that play in that to, now to actually be mm. able to, to create a, a, your system for the future uh, and that is really quite key. So mm. looking at all things like the digitalization, what you can use within the, the hyperscalers, so re really how you can interact your systems with those and, and get all the, the, the benefits. And, and it's really, that I think that the key problem that customers are facing though with innovation is not knowing what is possible. So the art of the possible is really key as well. So really having that plan and that forward thinking over the next couple of years where you want to be and what innovation you want to put in to, to really look at how you can restructure your platform and your business as well. Yeah, and, and, and that brings us uh, to the next uh, case here, which is uh, uh, Continental. Uh, and, and there, uh, well, um, let's call it a hybrid uh, cloud uh, approach, uh, continental uh, sort of adding uh, or added Asia to, to, to their sourcing mix uh, in, uh, and created this hybrid cloud strategy in, in their modernization process. And you have touched upon cloud and, and cloud seems to be an, an important part here, even though sometimes in when we look at the uh, survey as well, it might not be uh, that uh, something you see uh, as, as that obvious. Uh, could, could you talk a bit about the continental case again and, 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 the, and, and, and again the challenges uh, to their solution? Yeah, I, I think the, uh, the the problem that a lot of customers have got, and as Continental did as well, is, is obviously they were on a, an on-premise uh, and, and private cloud solution, uh, and it's really then people are expecting to actually move to the public cloud, but it's mm -hmm. then which public cloud do you move to, uh, and and what benefits from the public cloud do you get? So it's it's really looking at that, and, and we're seeing. Uh, a change in the industry as well. So mm -hmm. it used to be I want to move everything to 
public cloud. Um, so get completely rid of uh, on-premise or private cloud or anything else so but but now we're, we're seeing a, a complete change again where we're more customers now are doing a hybrid cloud model so they're, they're using private cloud for some areas where security may be uh, more of a key issue uh, and then they're, they're embracing the public cloud piece as well so joining the two together more in a hybrid cloud uh, environment and this is what continental did as well so it, it's really trying to judge the, the best fit as well so and, and this, this is where customers face that problem as well uh, as long with the innovation side of it as well is is where do you actually go and, and how do you actually approach that so which applications work well in the cloud which applications still don't work in the cloud at the moment uh, or you may have to upgrade them so it, it, it's really pushing that so with, with continental they were really looking at uh, the systems that they, they couldn't move uh, and the systems that they could move and, and then how best to then connect the, those in mm -hmm. as well. So it, it, it really is a, a challenge for customers at the moment. Mm. But, but on premise, uh, we'll, we'll still have a role to play uh, as, as you see it, right? Yeah, and it, 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 it's always going to be there. So um, things like um, country sovereign data and that, so lots of governments and that, mm -hmm. uh, things like um, banks and that, you, you must have the data within country. So there's a lots of areas where data must remain within country and that, so um, that, that, that's where a lot of on-premise is still quite key at the moment. Uh, Google are coming out more with mm -hmm. their, their sovereign cloud at the moment as well, so that you can actually do those pieces and that within a secured cloud environment. Um, but I think on-premise will still be with us for, for quite some time. And a, a lot of companies are now trying to still do uh, secure data centers and that. So um, I was doing a, a public speaking event a couple of weeks ago and we were talking with the Bank of England uh, and they have the Crown um, data center service where literally they are, their systems are in a uh, controlled vault and that. So they're all caged, they're all security but they can't go to the public cloud and that so that it's it's still going to be quite a necessity for, for quite some time to come I think because I think security is always going to be an aspect so it's easier to have that control of a, a system within your own data center still. Yes yeah, so, so, so that sovereignty is actually is actually also an important part of uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, understanding uh, what, uh, what what what's happening in 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 in, in the modernization process uh, right now, and that might uh, actually bring us to, uh, to to our third case also, because here we are talking about uh, Frankfurt Airport, and here we are talking about uh, a uh, well greenfield uh, uh, process uh, or implementation uh, in, in, in 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 this uh, uh, SAP uh, S4 uh, HANA, and um, what what I'm interested in here is. The, the, the greenfield aspects here in a modernization process. That's that's uh, that's that's interesting. That that's interesting. Uh, seen from your perspective. Yeah, and this this is quite a, a different one to the SAP case. And and, mm -hmm. and looking at the three cases that we're we're looking at now, you you can see the challenges that customers are facing from from all different areas and that. So so no case is is the same. So it's very very hard. Um, for, for um, businesses to actually decide which route to go. So th this is also a ma major problem. So with, with the uh, Frankfurt Airport one, then they, they were obviously looking at how um, best that they could do it. With, with, with SEAT, they did the brownfield migration and then switched on uh, the business functionality that they needed and, and did it that way. But with uh, Frankfurt Airport, they decided to go with a brand new installation uh, with the greenfield uh, process and then basically move some of those processes off onto the greenfield s4 system as as they move so um you're really running dual systems at that point and it, it's it's a quite complex um and it does take a lot longer as well because you're basically starting from fresh again if if like like today it's so S SAP is 50 today and that we've all been using SAP for a long time now and, and customers are, are, are really um, are, have got the way they, they want to work within their ECC systems, but then moving it to a more digitalized modern, modern platform and that is quite difficult to actually change your processes. So 
actually having to to sit down again from scratch and and really look at what the industry standard processes are and actually move those into a new system and then educate your users as well so this is the other the, the mm -hmm. problem that they're seeing as well is that that the user experience is different as well so moving from ecc to to s4 and that it's a completely different viewpoint so being able to do that with a greenfield approach though enables customers to get used to it more and, and as you're taking over your your business processes you, you can actually do that in a more controlled fashion as well and then you can take certain parts of your business on at, at certain times so you can have a more structured time but then the time frame for that we, we've seen customers do this over an eight or even ten year period and that so it, it can take a lot longer yeah and, and that said uh, we we see the picture, and 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 I believe that the audience here and and all of us as well know that that these SAP modernization they are large processes with a lot of projects. So maybe if, well, uh, could could you sort of uh, give us a few tips, maybe, or just uh, elaborate a bit on how uh, how actually to get sort of uh, uh, the, the the adequate resources uh, and, uh, and 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 access to the necessary skills. Uh, to do these uh, modernizations. Yeah, and I, I think one of the key key things that we're we're, we're seeing a, as a turnaround in the industry uh, again is um, uh, twenty years ago when, when I, I started on SAP, uh, we, we literally had a a, a five year plan. Mm -hmm. So you had a five year development plan of of how you were moving. Uh, that kind of changed to a more agile mm -hmm. development approach. So everyone's become more agile now in how they do their development and, and they're, they're looking, they're not looking very far forward. So mm -hmm. you may have a project that you're just a single project that you're looking at now um, in the next four, six months. And that. so you, you haven't got that. What we're finding now, though, is that it's going back to how it used to be. So we, we know what the end date is. We're, we're now having to work with customers to actually work out a five, six, seven, eight year plan of, of how they would modernize their, their systems, how they will move to the cloud, uh, how they will move to S4. But with that journey as well, there, there's lots of different things in the way, in the, uh, along the way that you can actually make your journey to the cloud cheaper. Uh, again, look at how you can move to, to S4. Um, as Anders was saying uh, before, and that about licensing, mm -hmm. and that there's lots of ways to to make different things cheaper, and that so actually having that full plan, your your business blueprint, uh, as as we we try and work mm -hmm. with customers now, actually creating that blueprint to to actually move forward, and that for the next five years at least, uh, on where you're going to get to S4 and how you're going to get there. Um, really building that now and that is absolute key and, and it, it will save customers a lot in in the future because having that actual innovation plan as well and how you're going to bring innovation in how you're going to bring digitalization in it, it is really key yeah and and and, and continuing in that, that or down that path we could maybe just talk a bit about how how you do integrate uh, the SAP environment with both legacy systems and uh, and modern uh, digital uh, transformation. Yes, and, and this, this is obviously a, a, another problem that we're facing as well. It is so, some systems aren't cloud ready, um, or they can't actually be um, made to work on on some of the clouds. So we, we're really having to to work with customers to see what they can do and that's why on-premise that exists as well um, and it's really looking at how you then interface to, to new uh, pieces of uh, infrastructure and and also applications as well so and and there is such a wide variety of choice now as well um, and so there's a lot of upgrades and that which can be and, and sometimes need to be done uh, along the way to, to really build that um, forward so it, it, it's really a case of uh, again going back to that that blueprint to say this is where we are today this is where we need to be in the future and then really structuring that plan of how to get there great and and before we, we, we finish up here in uh, uh, in the fireside chat maybe we could uh, uh, just 
elaborate a bit about the, the KPIs and, and Anas was uh, was touching a bit upon a sort of you need to measure uh, to, to get this right. Uh, in, 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 in your perspective, so what, what are the most important uh, KPIs, both as we look into cost, but also as we look into business? Yeah, and I, I think one of one of the key things that customers are facing at the moment is is really looking at cost mm -hmm. and that because obviously a lot of moving to the cloud becomes more of an operational cost mm -hmm. rather than a capex cost as well. So it, it's really trying to measure that and then weigh that off against the existing uh, infrastructure that they may have uh, on 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 premise systems. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're also now measuring uh, the business agility, uh, the transformation that they're receiving as well. And, and digitalization is very key uh, within the market at the moment, and everyone wants to implement digitalization. Um, and it, it's really sort of like looking at those focuses and, and really looking at um, those pieces and that to, to really monitor what you're doing and making sure it's not for the sake of doing it, but actually for the, the, the better for your business as well. Mm, excellent. So um, just to wrap up our webinar here uh, today, I would like to invite the Anna's back um, on stage or on screen. Uh, and uh, there's, there's a couple of questions uh, in the chat uh, and uh, we, we can start with, uh, with cloud uh, and uh, uh, and a question around that because you've both been touching on this and, and maybe you could give a, a bit more perspective into it. The, the question is about how do you see customers moving to cloud and building new SAP uh, to cloud instead of uh, original on-premise environment? Is cloud already the one or are customers afraid of moving from uh, on-premise uh, to cloud when doing modernization? Uh, I don't know if you would just start with that. Yeah, yeah I can do that. Um, I think Martin uh, may have answered a little bit uh, mm -hmm. on that already, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think to, to many companies uh, moving to the cloud is what they ideally would like to use. And that is the cloud, I'm not saying that, I guess we, we mean the public cloud uh, because all of the other systems uh, are really shifting there. Development platforms are increasingly um, you know, in the cloud. Um, and so it's not a, so that's the, the the reasons that they are not moving faster than, than they actually are is that there are that we have the uh, complexity. So we have the, you know, the, the legacy systems or the existing uh, applications and uh, customizations that cannot just be shifted. We have existing databases, we have existing business processes that cannot just be moved from one place to another. Um, and, um, and also for security reasons, as, uh, as Martin said, that we cannot just move everything. Um, and also, uh, so, so I think it's more about a, you know, some, some years back we had this kind of cloud first approach to everything, uh, let's move it to the cloud. And now we have increasingly talking about, you know, moving, optimizing cloud or moving the right things to the cloud. Uh, so it's much more about figuring out what goes to the public cloud, what stays on premise. Uh, and that is just a, a much more complex um, let's say, you know, process than just saying we will move everything, uh, probably better in the long run, but um, mm. I think it's more of a complexity uh, than a, a fear of the cloud per, per se. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Martin? Yeah, I, and I think, I think one of the other issues that we're, we're seeing as well at the moment is, is obviously uh, T-Systems is, is cloud agnostic. So we work with all the hyperscalers. So um, then we get a customer come to us and go to, to which is the best cloud for SAP. Mm -hmm. And, and, and this, this is another one of the problems that we're seeing now is that there isn't really a best one for SAP because SAP is its own application. It works perfectly well on an on-premise um, situation uh, as well as uh, within any of the public clouds or, or private cloud offerings. So it, we, we're finding it very difficult and customers are, are having that um, problem with now actually which is the best cloud for me uh, and we, we see that quite a lot now and mm -hmm. what we're trying to do as well at the moment is is working with those customers uh, and really looking at um, what is driving their business what's driving the the ecosystems around the SAP environments as well and then really looking uh, to see uh, which is the best fit for them because it, it, it's really now down to all the ecosystems that live around the SAP system that you're really going to get the best benefit from, from moving to the public clouds. So 
once you've actually got that, then you can actually build your cloud strategy and then SAP can then fit around all those ecosystems and that to be able to deliver that as well. So it's, it, it is a really hard, challenging piece for, for all customers at the moment. And, and that's why I think there's quite a lot of delay in customers moving to the public cloud as well, because there's too much choice and there's, there's too much that they have to do. And then some customers are, not doing anything because that's easier at the moment so it, it again it's going back to that blueprint of what you need to do for the future and then really building around that yeah and that leads to to, to another question that often comes up when you discuss this uh with cios at least because that's that's the time perspective and again a uh, huge processes uh, and with a lot of projects going on uh so, so what role does time play uh, as you see it uh, martin um, uh, time is absolutely key, key at the moment. We've uh, one of our, our our brands for for looking at customers for S four was the clock is ticking, and that. So even though it's it's twenty twenty seven twenty thirty, doing things now could make your journey journey easier. Can make uh, reduce the costs uh, and and really look at doing that. We we've got some customers that are on a ten year S four program. And, that, and really, they're, they're, they've, they've got an absolute level of which year, which month that each business is moving to S4. We've got other customers that are still saying, I'm, I'm going to look at that in 2025. We're, we're too busy at the moment. And, and as we've seen in, in lots of the surveys recently, some customers don't want to do anything until 2030. So it, it, it's going to be a, a key issue, I think, moving forward, because if, if they don't spend the time wisely now, then when they actually get to that point, then it, it's going to be a lot harder for them. Yeah. Yeah. Alison. Yeah. Just, just one thing, because I think uh, I like that you, Martin, call it a SAP program and not a project. Uh, because I think one thing is, of course, the time element that you need to do it sooner rather than later. Uh, but I think it's also um, the way that you think about it as not just as a project that over the next five years, we will modernize our SAP environment, and then it just sits there and uh, is, you know, just as as rigid as it was before, but in a more, more modern way. Um, but but really thinking more about it, how can we add to it? How can we, you know, extend the the program with another season with new episodes? With how, how do we continue to evolve it? Yeah, I think that's that's really is uh, is core in terms of uh, of the timing. It's not just a we need to do it in twenty five or in thirty. It's, it has to be a much more ongoing process um, about continuous modernization uh, that, uh, that we see. And on that note, uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for, uh, for sharing data, insights, uh, experiences uh, on, uh, on this webinar today. Uh, Anna Selbach, uh, IDC, uh, Martin Jones, uh, T-Systems, uh, thank you very much, uh, and uh, thank you very much for listening in also uh, here this afternoon.